do so much functional training. I do so many fucking push-ups and pull-ups. Yeah, well, your functional training is great and everything, but at some point, man, you still owed me one. One of these was supposed to be you. God damn it. It's supposed to be at like 21, 22 because of this fucking guy, Olympia titles. But no, he didn't end up doing the 212. Right at the time, it was actually 202, I believe. You don't you think I, you know. You robbed me of a couple extra. You don't think I think about that? <laughs> yeah. It's a little sad. It's a height. Yeah. Yep, you got better genetics than daddy. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. He's a freak. Look at those arms. How are you doing today? Fucking, yeah, not a mini me. All right, everybody. The infamous Honey Rambod. The procreator, the original procreator. So for everybody that doesn't know, Honey was my trainer whenever I did compete in bodybuilding. And I sound like a little bit of a horse saying this, but I never told the dude no. So we have something special planned for today. We figured we didn't know what to do. So either training video, podcast, let's do a little bit of a mix of both and just put me through a workout where, again, I really, there was never a time, I don't think I ever told you no training. No. And I don't think, I was like, fuck it, let's go, dude. No, absolutely. It's been good because we've been talking about wanting to do this for the last several years and me getting back out here to Pittsburgh. Yeah. I haven't been back out to Pittsburgh for at least, it's been three years since you and I were on the bridge yep. in those videos. You know? That was probably, yeah, three years ago. Three, three, four 19, years ago. Yeah. yeah. So since then, we've been wanting to do something together. And um, I still think there's a small likelihood of comeback because <laughs> you know he <laughs> loves to do those poses on instagram he loves to do those pro poses he still does the fsc7 workouts because i know i see you know <laughs> i see him you're still doing and, and those are bodybuilding workouts yeah i know that functional and fuckable shit it's a I'm little really bit different. good looker yeah well you know what it's good you actually gotten better looking in your old age but that's okay thank you and yeah. um it you know obviously he's doing really really well and i want to just be able to uh put him through a good workout and say hey look man I old times oh, the old man's got it right here and uh let's put him through a nice chest workout maybe get a little arm pump going on and uh we'll learn some tips too it'll be a uh, little nostalgia little new stuff but i don't know it's just good it's exciting i'm it pumped is. it is get the heart rate down getting a little excited oh tell. come on i can't not be excited <laughs> Good. Nice mind muscle connection. Jay Cutler mentioned that we're going to have to do an FST7 reunion, which is FST7 refined. Yeah. We have Seth, we had Phil Heath, Jay Cutler, uh, I believe Steve Kuklo. Steve. And I, I believe Tamer was even a part of that. And I don't know if Tamer was in the second one with you guys or if he was in the first one. He was in the first one for sure. I don't know if he was yeah. in the second. But um, and now Tamer, who I also turned pro in 2011 is now the largest promoter in the history of the sport. No with shit. Uh, over a hundred uh, shows he promotes. <sighs> yeah. So, and that was also a conversation that we had. So that's something that we oh. need to talk about. All right. Okay, control it, control it. Not so fast, slow it down. Good. Good. Breathe, brother, breathe. Good. 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 There you go. I do so much functional training. I do so many fucking push-ups and pull-ups. Yeah, well, your functional training is great and everything, but at some point, man, you still owed me one. One of these was supposed to be you. God damn it. It's supposed to be at like 21, 22 because of this fucking guy, Olympia titles. But no, he didn't end up doing the 212. Right at the time, it was actually 202, I believe. You don't you think I, you don't. Couple, you robbed me of a couple extra. You don't think I think about that? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a, what was it? Probably two years ago, three years ago. I was like, I have no regrets. And then as the years tick by, I'm like, well, there's one. Probably should have competed more. Let's do this. I hate you. <laughs> it was all built on this. That's it. Good. Good. Come on. Let's go. Control it. Control it. Come down. There you go. Not too fast. Not too fast. Good. Good, go back to bodybuilding. Slow it down, Just, there you go. There you go. Good, still strong as shit, good. From your professional perspective, me being as round and full as I got, mm -hmm. like whenever I was flat, I was flatter than a motherfucker. Right. But whenever I was round, whenever I was pumped and full and round, I still can get, I still achieve that. Like when I take this yeah. off, it's still there. Because those fibers were created. Is that why? Yeah. So because, 
Seth and I have worked together at such a young age. He was only 24, 25 years old. Uh, what was able, what he was able to do was able to really concentrate on those glycogen rich muscle fibers. So when you're, we were able to add in the higher volume FSD7 style training to the mix, he was able to keep that without thickening up his body because a lot of people will do power building and then they'll thicken up their core and they'll get bigger, but they won't necessarily get rounder because he's been able to get rounder and get those glycogen muscle fibers, rich muscle fibers to really push. He's been able to keep those fibers active and really, really round without even having to do five, six meals a day or be able to train and pick up 150 pound dumbbells like he used to or any of those things because those fibers are the ones that really give you that illusion of being really big and they really get you super pumped. So between all of the things that he's done younger, when he was younger, and carrying it over to what he's doing now, he still has the look. Yeah, he's a bit smaller, but that could all change with five meals a day. <laughs> <laughs> Some extra calories. <laughs> so that's the you thing know? people ask. They're like, you, you, you can't. You're like, they're, they'll say like, you, you look like you're still on a high amount of stuff, or you look like you're still yeah. doing this. I'm like, I only eat three meals a day with a snack or two, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm like, and then I just, I think that's just how I've trained for so long that it's, it's like my, it's like part of my genetic makeup. That's now. right, because you've really accentuated that part of your genetic makeup. And training that way, I mean, that's how you look cooler too. You do. I thought. <laughs> I'll do like, uh, I'll do the buck 20s here and there. I don't train chest off, I do a lot of pull, a lot of push ups, but then I'll do uh, flat bench. I'll kill flat bench, 225, and I'll just do, like during my circuit training, I'll do 10 reps for, do 10 rounds of 10 reps with some other stuff. Dude, if you had told me fucking two years I'd be doing this shit, you'd been like, no fucking way. No way. No way. I still, I still, I'm still a little fucked up in the head. Yeah, but that's that shit will okay. never leave. Yeah, and you know what? For those of you that don't know his journey earlier on as a bodybuilder, he was one of the most intense guys I've ever trained because he just had that I want to fucking knock everybody the fuck off the stage type of feel. Yeah. And God, God rest his soul, McMillan, when yeah. he just passed away. And yeah, I mean, you went up against him in your third show ever. Yeah. And, you know, and, and you know, you were, you were going head to head with the guy that won the Arnold. That would eventually win the Arnold. That mentality, that men, and that mentality of just fucking, I don't know, I loved it. That's why you and I got along. Yeah. That's why I never sold, said no to you. Yeah, because you, well, we were able You're to like, I know I could beat the fuck out of this kid. Yeah. He's gonna take it, and I yeah. loved it. Yep, let's go. You got this. Good, come on, Seth. Control it, good. Good, good. Good squeeze. Good. One more, one more. You got it. Easy. Easy. Oh. Somebody asked me the other day and they said, do you think, number one, Seth could come back and do damage? I said, oh, of course he can come back. It's just anybody can come back, but could you could be somebody that could mix it up? And they said, absolutely, because <laughs> the density of his fibers are so, so three-dimensional and so separated that it's a look that most people don't have. Honestly, you remind me a lot of Hottie, you know, because you have those fibers that fire and those, you know, the ones that create that dense look, that graininess. Well, I think that's the one thing that it's hard with these young guys today, which certain people, are able to do it, but making the connection with your training. Like that's what you and I always got along with. Just if you're able to connect with the training, dude, you'll be fucking ridiculous. As long as you can be disciplined with the diet, and, but you can connect with training, you did a good job of being able to, with all your athletes, like find out what works for them. Not so much what they like, but what fucking works for you. And I mean, that's why it always clicked. Cause with training, I'm like, I'm able to make a connection I love it. Training's always been my favorite part of everything. Yes. But uh, then you get full of yourself and you get a little hard headed mm -hmm. and it's, it's bound to happen. But those are things that looking back on, I'm like, man, it's fucking wild times. And 
you got to be able to stay focused and stay grounded. As you get older, you know what you get? Perspective. Yes. It's Perspective. A very, very strong word. Use it all the time. Three for right? Yeah, we'll do we'll do a few. Okay. Oh man. Fucking service, baby. Not everybody gets that. Not everybody gets that. <laughs> All right, let's go, son. Let's do this. Come on. Let's go. Oh. There you go. Come on, Seth. Come on, Seth. That's it. Yeah. Come on. Fucking easy. Yeah. Good. Last one. Drop it. You got it. Good job. You haven't had that heavy in a while. Fuck no. <laughs> My man. <laughs> right, we're gonna work on that upper pec, right, right near the collarbone. And we're gonna just go ahead and just do a straight set for your first one. Just about five reps. One. Two. Three, good, good. You got that back nice and arched. Shoulders are back so you can focus on the pec. Good. Good, keep going now. Keep it moving. Good. Good. There you go. Three more. One. Two. One more. Good job. Can you raise the weight a little Good. So what we're doing is we're really focusing on that upper chest. What I really always try to work on with Seth because he's really wide is to be able to really thicken up that upper chest because when you the wider you are, the more you want that upper chest thickness so that you can look thick and have depth in your physique. If you don't, what ends up happening is you actually end up looking really shallow. So if you said for guys that are like uh, shallow chested, broad shouldered, mm -hmm. you know how like guys will get that, like they'll be brought up in the collarbones, shoulder dominant, and then kind of flat. Yeah. These? Yes. So what you want to do is you want to start off the chest with upper chest exercises, we start off with incline presses. I'd always go into either a fly or what we're doing is a power press, which is the palms facing each other. And you're arching your back to try to get your shoulders back so your shoulders aren't going to be able to kick in during your press. And what you want to do is you want to arch and drive. So almost over. like you're here and then. Exactly. So you're you just here. pushing. You're not like extending exactly. all the way out. You're just here. There you go. Almost not like a, you're not, you're not like extending as if you would this. You're right. You're arching here and then what you're doing is you're creating that C in the back so that the shoulders are also back and you're keeping that chest forward. So as you're going to see in, in a few minutes when he sees how pump his upper chest is going to be, you're going to see all of those fibers just really getting stimulated. So arching your back and you don't want to go super heavy. You want to try to keep it in that 8 to 12 rep range and you want to be able to make sure that you get really clean reps because otherwise the shoulders will kick in, especially when your chest gets fatigued. Okay, now we're going to do three regular reps uh -huh. and then we're going to do statics. So oh go boy. ahead. Yep. Go. One. Two. One more. Now hold this one and do just this right side. Go. Go up. One. Good. Like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two. Three. Two more. One more. Good. The other side now. Control it. Good. Good. One more. Now together. Go. Together. Oh, yeah. One more. That's oh. Woo. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Dang shit, nah. <laughs> let's, let's take a look. Oh, yeah. There you go. So you still got that greenness. Good. Right there, right there, hold that. Look at that. I, I think some people have a hard time understanding everybody is very different when it comes to nutrition. Yeah. Some people like, for me being 37 years old, so experienced with this, my body, like if I went back to this for 12 weeks, hardcore, yeah. six meals a day, all that, I'd explode. Exactly. For people, that don't understand like what's a, a rough average for someone that's a hard gainer they're like 
They're like an ecto-mezzo, mm -hmm. before, and they train in the evenings. What do you think they should have carbohydrate-wise leading into a big workout? Well, it depends on your metabolism. So if your metabolism is really fast and you're lean, you can take in about 300 grams of carbs, no problem. And people are mostly underfed, especially if they train hard, especially if you're doing a lot of functional workouts. Yeah. You are burning the shit out of your carbohydrates. So again, that's why he's so lean, but I can tell right now he's flat. Like if he just turned around and added in three or four meals, bumped up the carbs, another two or 300 grams, his body would change tremendously because you are underfed while really being, I'm not gonna say overtrained because I don't know how sore you've been getting, but you've been training the shit out of your body. I don't want my weight getting too high. Well, exactly. But you're also, if you just bumped up your food a little bit, your body would change a lot. But um, So around training time, would you say like a carbohydrate powder pre-workout? Right. Right, like you have demo day, I believe. Yeah. You know, I had glycogen. Yeah. And we made when we were when I was testing it, you were one of the first guys I tested it on. Yep. I'm right. And so what we did was we were able to use something that was going to be able to kick in right away to help with digestibility, to give you endurance, give you a pump, yep. and be able to do all those things that you're trying to get from food, but you know the convenience of a powder. Yep. Mix that up with your pre-workout. Mix it with your intra, mix it with your post, and that's what we do. Does it sound familiar, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I think people, I mean, you were, whenever we were going through it all, you were like, you got to remember how things need to be able to be digested well. And that's been the big thing for me is like, it has to, digestion, absorption, elimination, like you got to remember how important it is to absorb everything that you're taking in. And carbohydrate powders play a huge role in that. Yes, they do. There you go. Five. Good. Five. Three. Three. Two. Good. Together? Together? Shake it. There you go. Shake and bake. Shake and bake. Last one. Last one. Come on, Seth. Good job. Whoa. Good, good. See how those muscles, what you're doing is basically being able to try to create that static hold is basically making sure that you're getting more time under tension. So, so the static shit, that was, that was after me. Yes. That was, so that's, that become, was right that's become a big... That's, that's a big part of my programs now because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep the, all the ancillary muscles really strong, not just on the concentric and eccentric, but also on the static. Because you were huge on the concentric and eccentric right. and also pushing blood, the roundness, the fullness. Yes. So, so now the stabilizing muscles. Treat me like an idiot. That's what this is. The static is all about the stabilizers. Right. We're doing this all the stabilizers and even more time under tension because as you're pressing with the eccentric concentric on the opposite side, uh -huh. you're still having to use the muscle. And so it's, 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 it's working. Well, I felt it because I could already start, I was starting to shake, shake before I even did it. Right. So you're basically creating even more time under tension, which is going to equal more muscle growth, but you're also helping with all of the stabilizer muscles. And that's why you start shaking. Mm -hmm. It's like not doing abs for months and months and months or ever and then you start shaking because the muscles not used to being worn. So now the stabilizing muscles are kicking in and they're starting to fatigue. So that's a really good thing that you can add into your program. I was just going to say, so how often do you work that into a workout? Like, you know how you would be like, do FST seven, mm -hmm. like the advanced shit mm -hmm. on this day because right. you need it. Right. Do this on your other days because you don't need it so much. Do it at the end of your workouts like we normally would and then you would put it at the beginning of the workouts. When do people do static shit? Certain I mean, exercises? Yes, certain exercises, and usually at least once a workout, I'm adding them in now with certain exercises. So, oh, so once a workout, you'll be like, fucking let it yeah, rip. Yeah, we'll, exactly, let it rip on once a workout, and it, depending on kind of where they're at in their training cycle. So as long as their bodies are recovering really well, once a workout, it could be on biceps, where we you'll see me training a lot of the guys where yeah. you're holding, and then you're doing the other side. Yeah. You oh, should, yeah. Right, there you go, hold it. Watch your chin, get it up, there you go, turn, turn, twist more. See how round you still are? Yeah, you're definitely not as big as you were. But you're still, I mean, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, but no. I mean, and people just don't realize like how big you were. But at the end of the day, you, you could be right there really quickly with just food. It's not a drug thing. I'm talking about just, just, just like more food. 
because look how round you are and you have you get some of that what we call that old man muscle. A little grainier. Yeah. I know it took a minute for the tricep, but took some time. Remember we'd be in the room and I'm carving you up and you're just fucking shredded all through the delts and you're like, what is this? What is what's that's, going that's, on? Yeah. Because it's like it's like all of a sudden I could feel them again. Yeah. It's awesome. That's one thing that I will say that I miss tremendously is like when you're competing and like them last two weeks in are just horrendous. And like all the cardio, yep. the no I mean it was just for me it was so plain because you're like, you're a fucking head case. You're gonna freak out at the show. We need you bone dry shredded. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, man, I can feel everything. It was awesome. I remember Dallas eating a shitload of potatoes. Yep. And then you're like, I think we're gonna have to feed you some sodium. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. And you're like, not too much though, but you're a fucking head case. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get one more uh, of this. So on this one, what I'm gonna do is just so I can check and see what your stabilizer muscles look like uh -huh. in terms of strength. I'm gonna do this on a press. We're gonna do a regular press, incline. We're gonna do about three. And then I'm gonna just kind of get you to kind of do some reps on there cool. just so I can see what it looks like. Cool. Good, one more. Now hold it. Good, just right. Go. Oh yeah, you're loving this shit. Yeah. There you go. Good. Next. Good. There you go. There you go. Good. Tough. Together. Good. Oh. Together. Oh. Good. Oh. Good. One more. One more. Good. Oh. Yes. How you like that, motherfucker? I love this shit. I do miss it. <laughs> yes, get your hand. That's it. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. There you go. <sighs> Good. You're much grainier now than you used to be. Good. 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 Pause at the top. Pause at the top. There you go. Good. Chin up. Chin up. Good. Arch your back. Good. Extend. And pause. Give me that pause. Give me that pause. Don't cheat. Good. Don't cheat. There you go. Come on, Seth. Good. Right here. Arch your back. Arch your back. Good. Squeeze. Good. Hold the top. Hold the top. Hold the top. There you go. Good. Come on. Two, 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 two. Good. Don't bend those elbows too much. Go out. There you go. One more. One more. Squeeze. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Good. Get some aminos with uh, your carbs. Oh man! There you go. Carbs during the workout. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I don't no, take I a whole lot of carbs, bro. I know. I know. I know. It's all like you got to change. We're gonna change that a little bit. A little bit. I give you give me you give me. You, I'd be like, hey, dude, I need like a new diet. Like I'm trying to be functional, and I'd get it over. It'd be six meals a day. 400 carbs, fuck no, it. I'd be like, no, no, no I know, no, I'm fucking with no, you. We, we can go in between. We'll ease you into it. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a pussy. You're fucking big the JJ here. Yeah, he looks at the car, he put, he put three quarters of his own shit in there. I'm like, what are you doing? Whole thing. Put the whole thing in, okay? Um, he just wants to play just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> this pendulum swing a little too far the other way. Yeah, we gotta, <clears throat> we gotta just give him a little more food here. We gotta bump him up a little bit. Put you back on the grits. Mm. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's been 11 how years. How about that? How about fucking how grits and cream of rice made this fucking massive comeback? I think of all the shit back in the day, like the grits, the cream of rice. You were like, this and this. And I'm like, bro, ain't nobody else talking about this shit. And you're like, dude, this is, this, this is better. Cream of rice is better than oatmeal. And I'm like, really? And you're like, right now for you, yes. Now, dude, cream of rice is everything. 
Yeah. Always ahead of the gang. I'm gonna stroke you off a couple more times before no, you <laughs> get, get the fuck out. It's, it's all right. <laughs> Sit here, fucking enjoy it. <laughs> go. <sighs> Come on, brother. Let's go. Show me. There you go. Good. Good. Focus. Keep that back arched. Focus. Good. There you go. Good. Squeeze. Good. Control it. Control it. Watch. Watch that negative. Slow down a little bit. Slow down a little bit. Good. Good. Come on, Seth. Squeeze. Good. Good. Give me three more. Give me three more. Open your hands. I want you three second pods. One, two, three. Good. Good. You got two like that. Go. One, two, three. Good. Good. One, two, and three. Good job. Good. Bro, I forgot how bad them suck. That's a shit that I, I just didn't, don't do anything. Haven't done it in years. The squeeze is like that. The three seconds rather than just one second, because one second looks good. Yeah. Well, these are the sets, these are the, what I call the sets that you see, right? These are the sets that you see. These are the reps that you see, okay? Going through the motion is what everybody does in the gym that's been going to the gym for many, many years. But going to the gym and trying to get to an end result, you have to turn around and break those plateaus, and you have to make sure that you do things that your body's not used to doing. So, hence, getting back to a little bit of the stuff that we used to do to get him to that next level. Would you say, since I'm a little out of the loop and you're still in it, would you say that athletes have changed, like, have they changed their training styles over the years? Have you noticed a change, like, if you get a new athlete, would you say that they're still they're not accustomed to the way you do things? Yeah, you have to break them in, or yeah, absolutely. I think, but everybody's a little bit different, right? Every athlete is a little bit different. You have some athletes that that are into training really heavy, but you got to get them into more volume. Then you have guys that are in volume, but they don't train heavy enough with volume, and they're just doing too many sets and reps, but they're getting fatigued and not going to failure. I think that's gone the other way a little oh, bit. Oh, there's something to explain. Then why don't you do that? What's the difference between fatigue and failure? So. Going through fatigue is basically meaning that you're just getting tired and you continue to keep going through the reps or the sets. And you're just basically trying to tap that pencil on top of that dynamite. It's been an example we've been using in bodybuilding for the last 20, 30 years versus going in with a hammer and just hitting it and getting that shit to explode. So what we want to do is we want to go to failure. So when you go to failure, whether it's a six to eight failure or 10 to 12 failure, okay. that means you are done. You are done. And then when you're done with that full range of motion, then what I've done with you in the past or in my athletes is we'll do partials. partials. We'll do forced reps. Yep. We'll do negatives. Yep. We'll do all of these different types of different, ex, ex, just chalk through them. We'll go through them and we'll try to create more, what I like to call intensity multipliers, right? You want to multiply the intensity. So those are the things that we add in. Now, when you go into fatigue, you're just going 12, 15 reps and you're just getting tired and then you stop and that's it. Or you go 18 and you stop. But those are not those going, those are not growth sets and reps. That is not what's going to get you to the next level in terms of that size and that fullness if you're trying to become a professional bodybuilder or even look like one. We're trying to dramatically just change your physique. Sounded perfect. <laughs> that's why that's a big question for a lot of people. It's like, cause like what's in, you know, overtraining or even like to fatigue, like there's, the fatigue is just like you said, like you're just, you're tapping it with a pencil. You're using yeah. the wrong tool for the wrong, for that job. Right. Or you're and just going to maintain what you got, which is fine. You're going to maintain it. But if you're trying to get to your body to the next level and break a plateau, you're not going to do that with just being able to get into fatigue. If you're just trying to get to the point where you're just tired, you'll burn calories, you'll look good. You'll still get, you know, if you're getting abs, you might get a little tighter, but you're not going to get muscle growth if you're looking to try to get 3d that's not going to happen oh my God, you know. that's it make it count make it count good good chin 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 okay and the reason why you need to keep that chin up is so that you can be able to get the maximum flexion as you bring your hands together with that upper chest lots of times when your chin is down you're limiting your range of motion as well really that's it. There you go. Things that are going to make you really make sure that you're getting better flexion, keeping your chin up, and opening those hands, bringing it together. Good. 
good. Squeeze, squeeze, good. There you go. Come on, give me three second holds. Three, two, one, good. Go, Seth. Three, two, one, good. Five seconds, four, three, two, good, John. Let's go, let's do a flex set, come on. That's it, hold that, hold that. Good, hold that, hold that, that's it, yes. Good, squeeze, 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 five seconds. Four, three, two, ah. years ago this weekend 13 years ago weekend. this weekend was our first show first show together yeah. ever yep it was and a fucking riot came into your yeah. <laughs> right i was the one that had to deal with the head case i went back to jay cutler and phil heath and they're like Who, who'd you have to go help i said this fucking complete and utter nut job <laughs> and then that was when i gave you the nickname yeah do you remember tatanka yeah <laughs> tatanka because in the kevin costner movie dances with wolves the tatanka the was what a water buffalo was. And that's what he was. He comes in the room and he says, I'm look like shit. Holding a ton I'm of holding water. A ton of water. A ton of water. And I said, it can't be that bad. I just saw pictures of you from a couple of days ago. He couldn't have done that. He's like, no, I'm going through shit. And he's walking back and forth like a crackhead. <laughs> Crazy fiend. And I go, dude, calm down. And I said, calm down. Let me just take a look at you and let me decide that. And then I was like, Oh fuck, he's right. I he was like <laughs> dog shit. <laughs> I was freaked out in my head. That's yeah. being young and inexperienced at shows. And what happened was, and this is a lot of you who've ever done a show before or just stressed about a photo shoot or anything, you're gonna notice that your cortisol level has a lot to do with how much water you hold. And obviously, he was the cortisol king. Mm. Okay? Champion. Undeniable. <laughs> undefeated. <laughs> The cortisol king. Yeah, I, I. He literally went from looking great when he was chill to looking like he had just had all you can eat sushi the night before I'd see him. Yeah. And uh, I had to turn around and, you know, do some of the things that we did, dry him out. Yep. Change some things up. Yeah. But what we did was I, I was really just, I had to change his food up. And believe it or not, I even cut back his carbs because to dry him out, where normally you'd carb somebody up to be able to get him really round in 3D. For him, I was more worried about water, so there I was tapering actually his carbohydrates. Hence, uh, hence why for nationals that same year, six months, six months later, on your like, during the tr during that whole process leading up, you're like, hey, you like you got to get fucking in shape, dude. And I'm like, motherfucker, this is the best shape I've ever been in. And you're like, but you need to get in shape. And I'm like, okay, so apparently he's telling me I'm not in shape. You got it, dude. More cardio, more this. And I'm like, man, I am fucking. I look better now than the dudes on stage last year. And I'm still like two weeks out. And then it was all that whole reason. And finally, when we were there, you're like, I had to get you in such good shape where when you came here and freaked out, nothing would happen to you. And I'm like, yeah, because there's no fat on my body now. There's no fat, there's nothing left. Less, we're less of a chance for you to have an actual cortisol episode. episode. <laughs> <laughs> Season one of the Cortisol King. <laughs> Open up the hands a little bit, get the fire, don't hold your breath. We need oxygen to be able to get a pump and for you to have endurance. Number one issue, all athletes of all ages, of all levels, they tend to hold their breath. You've got to continuously breathe. Especially, you know, one or two reps, not a big deal, but when you're getting past that and you're holding your breath, you are going to starve that muscle from oxygen. Good, good, breathe, good. good. Get some blood back in there, good. Big thing, it's one thing I'll say that I suck at, chin up and then not forgetting to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's always yeah. been something that you've always said to me is breathing. Yeah. You always hold your breath. And always. I, there's a lot of athletes who do it, but you were one of those things where it was always just constantly reminded. But once you reminds you, boom, it would just click on, and then we would get back to business. So breathe. So breathing isn't just so you don't fucking pass out. It's actually just, continuing to push oxygen. Yeah. So you need oxygen so you can keep that endurance going. Your body needs the oxygen to be able to actually do the repetitions. Yeah. You know? Again, you hold your breath for one or two reps. It's not a big deal. But when you start doing anything longer than that. You're gonna, you're gonna hang up for, for a well, these are these are things that like people like. Whenever you talk like this, these are the things like the inches that add up, yes. that not everybody knows about. Whenever we're talking about something, it's like, it's like people understand how to get to the next level or what to do, and you're like, well, there's fucking, there's literally inches around every single fucking corner that you know exactly how to pick up and pay attention to and click with and find and push people to the next level. Well, and one of the big things also that we know, speaking of those things, is also people who can't seem to get a pump. And a lot of times, because we're in an over-caffeinated society and culture, you're dehydrated. So making sure that your water levels and hydration level is really high is really, really important. You know, I don't care if it's his pre-workout, my pre-workout, you're taking something that you bought wherever. The bottom line is it doesn't matter how good it is if you're dehydrated because you're not gonna be able to really get a pump. So make sure you're drinking plenty of water going into it, sip some aminos earlier in the day to get you in there because lots of times we add in different types of coconut water or any kind of um, different types of ingredients that are gonna help with hy hyperhydration so that your body has the ability to actually absorb that water and get it to really stick so that you're going to have that pump because if you're dehydrated, I don't give a shit what you take for your pre-workout, you're not going to be pumped. So I bought, I bought EVP and it just didn't give me the pump I thought it would. You're so full of fucking shit, but I know you're full of fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was tested on by the best. <laughs> if you notice, Seth is one of the few bodybuilders that are out there that has all of these fibers, you know? Again, referring back to Phil, Phil has got some really great arms, but he's also very fibrous. Seth has that as well, all through his biceps. You see the splits, okay? A lot of guys nowadays have really big arms or they'll have big body parts, but you don't see the quality. Squeeze, good. Good. One more. Good job. Okay. Now, we're, now we'll start going, to going into ladders, which basically means that what we're going to do is we're going to pick three different points. We're going to go low, medium, and high to change up the angle so that when we're doing the actual fly exercise, we're working on different angles throughout the ex actual set. So lots of times you'll do a full set with your hands high or your hands low. We're going to actually be changing the variation during the actual set. So I think everybody has now got a full understanding of why you and I got along so much. Because <laughs> whenever I'm doing a set, I'm always like, whenever I'm doing triceps or anything, I'm like, just go here and then change your shoulder placement, yep. take a step back and keep yep. it. It's almost yep. like you're like, you got to remember when you're doing all those things, you're still doing a tricep press down. However, you're going to hit your body parts at different angles and all of a sudden it's just going to keep getting more and more and more full, more rounder, more, more fuller. Development, more yep. development and you're fatiguing different angles of the biomechanics. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start up top and then we're gonna go down, mid, and high. Three, three, three up top. One. All the hands, two. Open up the hands. Give me one more. Chest up, chest up. Shoulders back, shoulders back. Give me one more, one more. Good, good, go down, you go down. Two, one. Two, you got midpoint. One, two. Arch, 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 arch back. One, two, one more, three down, go, two, good, one, two, midpoint, one, two, up top, finish two, finish two, finish two, one, good job. Uh, yeah, I gotta come to Texas for a few days. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Need some barbecue? We'll put you on a, a nice, veggie, vegan diet for three days before, <laughs> then we'll carve you up. We're, 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 gonna, we're gonna cow you up. We're gonna carve you up, we're gonna cow you up. Beef and bison, hold it. There you go. There you go. Hold that, hold that, hold that. Good. Three, one, go.
Good. Good. These are called ladders because you're just going up and down just like a ladder. Control, slow down, slow down. Two. Now hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Now go into a press. Bring it back. Bring it back. To my hands now. Five. Four. Three. Arch your back. Arch your back. Get your shoulders back. There you go. Push that chest. Good. Three more. Three more. Three more. One. Two. 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 Extend. One more. Good job. You yeah. see the front last spread. Uh oh. Good. Good. Lift the shoulders up a little bit higher. There you go. Arch your back a little more. There you go. Good. Right there. Relax. Good. Good. Did you tell everybody that follows what Ferrosi shredded? How you got that name? <laughs> that was from that was from fucking nationals. And then going into fucking Dallas and it just being ugly. It was that thing that was because I remember whenever I was at, at Nationals, waited till the last minute to take off my clothes because nobody had seen me. It was like a fucking Dorian Yates, nobody seen me for months, and everybody's like, what's this kid gonna look like? Right. Fucking peeled to the bone. And then we showed up looking even better on stage the next day. And then whenever we were at Dallas, had to make 202. And the last few weeks were ugly. We get there and I go out on stage and I just heard people going, oh my, oh my. And I'm like, yeah, I'm on, motherfucker. And I was just peeled to the bone, shredded. And people were like, you looked a little nasty on stage, brother. I'm like, that was a fucking goal, dude. No. So once the consistency of being shredded to that point was established, then people would call me, people that I either knew in the bodybuilding industry or I coached, and they basically, it almost became synonymous to ordering something off the menu when you go to In-N-Out Burger. There's a secret menu, and there's a thing called animal style, right? And they'll make it a certain way, but it's not on the menu. So then they say, hey, look, when I get ready for the show with you, honey, I don't want you to get me shredded. I want you to get me ferocity shredded. <laughs> so it was like, like ordering off the secret menu. I love it. It was a good time. Yeah, I think Fuad was, was one of yeah, those. Yeah, he was the one that started it all. Yeah, he yeah. was like, yeah, he was one of the He's one like, of the he's like, what like, did you do? And I'm like, everything that Honey told me to do. I remember, I'll never forget the one time. There was, there was, there was two times, but this one sticks out in my head. I was at Walmart, grocery shopping. I had just sent you photos. There was no phones like this back then, right. you know. We had to take, take pictures and put them, upload them, all that shit. You know. And, uh, and I'll never forget, I was walking through Walmart, dude, I'm fucking beaten, dude. I felt just into the ground, and uh, we're going through, and I got the phone call, and you're like, hey, dude, like, we need to up your cardio, and we need to take it to the next level. And here I thought, like, I'm killing it. And there was no, like, good jobs, there was no bad jobs, there was no nothing. It was just straight fucking business. And I think we were about four weeks out or so, maybe five, and it was like, that was whenever it was initially like my first like, bud, get fucking ready because we're getting to another level. And I'm like, this is gonna get ignorant. And I kind of like felt emotional because I'm like, I felt like I just got the wind knocked out of me. Here I am thinking I just sent my photos and I look the best I've ever looked, but get fucking ready. Yeah, there's a couple of them too. Then two weeks later, we looked fucking stupid. We're 21 days out and, and I just sent you pictures. You hit me up, you're like, okay, when was the last time you had a cheat meal? And I'm like, four months ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, a long time, and yeah. you're like, but you need a cheat meal. I'm like, we're 21 days out from the fucking show. I'm like, I'm not eating anything bad. You're like, you're going to go eat a steak burger. And I'm like, I can't do that. And you're like, you're going to fucking eat it and look better. And I'm like, you think so? I'm like, yep. Sure enough, when ate steak burger, it was steak burger, fries, Diet Coke. And then you were like, uh, you need, I ate angel food cake with that because I told you I liked angel food cake. You're like, yeah, have a piece of that. Dude, two days later, three days later, I looked fucking stupid. And I'm like, he was right. I'm 18 days out. I'm not going to lose. I'm, did you lose? No. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, man. My man. That's it, man. Great work. I out. love you. Absolutely. Need to awesome. come to Texas. Yes, yes, Need yes. Need to come to Texas. Yes. So, guys, let me know what body part you want us to do next time we're together. 
because I really feel that we should do a couple more of these, try to get him back, come back. I don't know. Little one, especially if it's just, let's start off with just some photos and do some, maybe we'll do the Honey Rambod Seth Ferrosi challenge. Mm. We'll come up with something, something special. Be good times. Yeah, something oh, man. special. Good job. Everybody subscribe, like, make sure you go check out all honey shit. We'll put it in the bio and uh, keep being good motherfuckers. I love it.